Absolutely. Um, so uh, my name is Icy and I am a streamer and I am nearly 49 uh, and I've been playing computer games since I was a wee young thing. I started on a Commodore 64. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my, the, the, the game I fell in love with was Labyrinth. I mean, I fell in love with the movie, obviously. <laughs> For anybody of a certain age, you'll know what I mean. Um, but yeah, the game absolutely set its hooks into me and I've been playing computer games pretty much ever since then. So I would like to go through and introduce who's on the panel today and they're going to talk to you about their love of computer games and their age and how that affects them. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, you will meet some interesting people. Toast Rack, would you like to say hello? G'day everyone, morning. You're so punctual. People <laughs> of a certain age are very punctual, thank you. Uh, I'm 58 years old, my name is Toast Rack TV. I'm a full-time Twitch streamer uh, where I mostly play Escape from Tarkov. Uh, I started streaming during COVID, but the first game I ever played was uh, before consoles on a 300 board dial-up modem with an acoustic coupler on the back and thermal paper printer which uh, dialed into my dad's friend's work Honeywell mainframe oh. <laughs> and that's where I played in primary school uh, the original text adventure command line text adventure colossal cave. Oh nice, very nice. Been eaten by a groom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and V. Uh, I'm not a streamer. <laughs> don't find me. I don't need engagement. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, the, I'm the industry development manager at New Zealand Centre of Digital Excellence, aka Code NZ. We've got 18 New Zealand games on the show floor over there. If you want, that's, that's what my gift to everyone is today. Please go and check um, them out. They're great. Uh, my first game, the first thing that, that doomed me to this path was uh, <laughs> an, buying an Atari 2600 when I was nine, eight, nine, eight, yeah, something like that. And then at the age of 15, what sealed the deal was I bought second edition Warhammer 40,000, which, mm -hmm. and I've had a 30-year relationship now with the, with the game, and it's something like an abusive boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so my name is uh, Since Spaces, or Brian, and I've been playing since Space Invaders. That was yeah. the first game I ever played. Got up on that milk crate and... Uh, <laughs> just been attached to video games ever since. Um, the first console I ever owned was a Sega SC3000, and the first game I had on that was a game called Pet Car. <laughs> it only had two rounds on it, and I spent a lot of time on that. Uh, I actually ended up working at Sega on the Sega hotline, uh, taking a lot of calls from people who were stuck in games. Maybe one of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alex Kidd in Miracle World was the most common caller. Uh, sun waves moon, star sun moon, waves fish star fish. I know that code <laughs> off by heart um, because of years of calls from that. Uh, and I've been streaming since 2018 and uh, haven't, lo haven't stopped playing video games since. Mm -hmm. so. And Noel. Uh, hi, my name is Noel, also known as Fury76. Uh, I have worked in and around the games industry for about 15 years now. Starting off at PlayStation Tech Support during like the PS2 and PS3 and PSP era, then moving on to places like Bethesda, some indie studios, on Modern Storyteller, then some time in government for National Film and Sound Archive, and most recently at Play On. Um, and beyond that, also, you know, love trying to preserve game history. Like, I believe that gaming is one of those art forms that is sorely um, under, underappreciated that needs to be preserved for future generations. Uh, for me, my first ever game, or the first ever game I ever played, was a Pong clone. So you could slide this little slide down and go from, I'm going to play tennis, and I'm going to play hockey, I'm going to play soccer, because they're all so different, just by that one <laughs> little change on the screen. Um, but my first proper, I suppose, proper console was a Commodore 64, and I fell in love with D&D games on that. Uh, TSR, DSD, d d games, things like Hillsfire, stuff like that. I absolutely love, and I still have those games in the original boxes from way back in the day, and I absolutely adore that sort of stuff as well. But yes, that's me. No, thank you very much, everybody. Um, thank you very much, everybody. Um, uh, so, um, really, as we age and as we change, uh, our lives change as well. Like, so we're we're young, and we maybe have all the time in the world to play games, whether they're board games, computer games, 
war games, um, you as you get more responsibilities, things happen, you take a step back maybe. How have things changed um, Toys Rack TV? Um, well, I came in and out of gaming through my life because this, like, streaming is my fourth career. So uh, I, I was very much into computers and games uh, starting out. Mm. Um, and uh, as, like, in high school, my dad and I used to write computer games on the Sinclair ZX81. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, text adventure, <laughs> and the membrane, plastic membrane keypad. And I had summer jobs uh, coding games at, at, uh, at places. But then I went into IT went away from it, then came back again to it. Uh, during COVID, when uh, my TV editing job shut down and I was mm. sent home and I was just was playing uh, Escape from Tarkov all day and watching streamers to learn how to play the game and, and uh, decided to give it a go. So yeah. I sort of came in and out of gaming mm -hmm. um, all, all of that time. Mm -hmm. And V, has your like love of playing games of any kind changed or like if you had to take a step forward, a step back, working in the industry, that does make it a bit different for you? Uh, these days, I, I mean, obviously, I live in indie games. That's what I do for a living. Um, I support small teams to get their business up and all that. Um, so I've probably dr dropped away from AAA. I've, I've become fairly disillusioned with AAA over in, in the video game space over the past few years. Um, I, in 2016, when I transitioned, I gave away, I sold all my 40K stuff and all my miniatures, and I was like, I'm never doing that again. I'm never, no, 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 no. In, in 2020, um, during the pandemic, and I wanted to get away from screens, mm -hmm. I was effectively working shift work. I was working remotely in Perth for a New Zealand company. There was a five hour time difference. Mm. And then instead of opening a bottle of wine, I opened a box of miniatures instead. <laughs> Ooh, um, I mean, that's probably a more expensive decision, really. <laughs> But it's better for the skin. <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's true. Um, I, I knew I was after the pandemic. I was, I was presuming the pandemic would lift at some point, and that we were going to relocate. And I thought I needed to meet people outside of work, and I yeah. thought, you know, stupid plastic miniatures games and shouting at people would work. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and Spaces, how has your relationship with gaming changed or not changed as you've gotten older? Hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I've probably spent more hours uh, playing games in more recent years than I uh, did when I was growing up. I was one of those sick people that I'd be working in a game store and everyone else would talk about how when they get home they just switch off, they don't want to see a game. Yeah. I'd be like... But I'm borrowing games to play at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was, yeah, kind of really obsessed with it. Uh, I find myself now playing more JRPGs like Persona 5 and mm -hmm. um, Xenoblade Chronicles X is my favourite at the moment. I know it's an old game, but I still keep going back to it. Um, as far as AAA games go, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I've got the same uh, opinion in the way that uh, I feel like they're just chasing... Um, they're trying to work out ways to nickel and dime you and I'm just not really a fan of that myself. No, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. And Noel, how has your relationship uh, with gaming changed as you've gotten older? I'm trying to think of a good way to phrase this about making it sound like an abusive relationship. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's been good. Like, I've, Working in the games industry is one of those things where the perception is, oh, it must be great to play video games all day. I'm like... Why in the hell do you think I sit around playing video games all day? <laughs> um, I'm talking to you guys all day. Um, no, it's one of those things. I've always had a love of video games. It's a beautiful form of escapism and also a beautiful way to engage in an interactive story. Uh, I'm a big fan of games like single-player games with a beautiful storyline, um, things that have a really engaging plot behind them as well, also the art style, all that sort of stuff. Um, one game I keep falling back into, and I, I'm sure yeah, the shirt might give it away, I love the Fallout franchise, I love the story behind all that sort of things. Um, Elder Scroll games, things like that as well. I think that's part of the reason why I loved working at Bethesda. Mm -hmm. um, but also retro games, because I'm a big believer in like knowing where we've come from to get where we are and appreciating that jump. Because like I've um, <laughs> my friend's kids came over to play uh, some games the other day and they wanted to play the original Mario on the original NES. I've never seen an eight-year-old rage quit a game so quickly in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but how do I save my progress? You don't. <laughs> oh, but where are the extra buttons? You have two. <laughs> 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 
It's just that nice educational journey, I think, that every, every person needs to go on to appreciate games fully. And if you've got young people here, do take them down to the, uh, the vintage oh, console section just so they can get an awesome. appreciation of 100%. that. 100%. There's a yeah. beautiful section down there. Yep. Um, one, one thing occurs to me with my changing relationship with games as I get older, gaming used to be a guilty secret for me. Oh, yeah. It mm. used to be something I would uh, hide from people or I'd go home and... Uh, game, but I, my workmates wouldn't know, and I wouldn't tell them. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, that, and uh, even some of my partners were very um, didn't like my gaming, and I'd hide my gaming yeah. from them. I'd wait till they go to work. I'd be working from home on a project and be playing, yeah. uh, you know, Armor Three Battle Royale all day or something like that, feeling very guilty about it. But uh, as I've gotten older, I've, I've sort of found a way to accept my gaming more mm -hmm. and come out as a gamer and be proud of being a gamer and be able to tell uh, friends and family about it. I think gaming culture has changed, but also getting older, you just accept yourself more yeah. and. Uh, therapy doesn't hurt either, but uh, no, now, now, I'm, now I'm a proud gamer is what I, I'm saying. I love how yeah. you just said you come out as a gamer. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 no, I mean, I'm not even making a joke here. I think that, I mean, that used to be a thing. You used to mm. come out as a gamer. It was a yeah. massive yeah. stigma behind yeah. it. So, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was a huge yeah. stigma back in the day to be like, oh, you're a gamer. Mm. Oh, I've yeah. actually uh, seen people getting beaten up. Yeah, oh, I, remember oh. back, yeah. I remember once again, back in the 80s when like pretty much being a gamer was just, you know, oh, a nerd, whatever, and you would get beaten up and stuff. You know, your stuff would get broken. Um, I remember I had uh, a game and watch, a Donkey Kong game and watch, which I absolutely loved. Took to school one day and people thought, oh, it's just, you know, you're a nerd, whatever, and just snapped it right in front of me. Mm. Um, teachers didn't care about it because, like, well, it's just a toy. Mm. And they're oh, expensive. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> and now, they're, oh, my God, the price of them these days is ridiculous. Yeah. But it is that sort of thing. I think PAX is a great example of the fact that Gaming is now more and more mainstream. If we look at the crowd here tonight, we've got a quite a diverse, well, tonight, today, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long couple of days, people, yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, and he's old. Yeah. I am old. Um, uh, but it's quite a diverse, you know, gender, uh, sorry, age group in here as well. And it's one of those things where gaming is for everybody. And realistically, it should be for anybody and everybody, no matter age, race, sex, gender, mm -hmm. No matter what, gaming should be a safe place, an acceptable place for everybody to be able to enjoy games, no matter who you or what you are. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> and I think it's a really important role, actually, that all of us who are here who are older gamers actually play um, within the gaming space because we basically... People who are younger than us, their parents, um, their older relatives may not understand in the same way that we still have friends, people our age who are just like, oh, you play games. It's There is still a thing. But we can actually make sure that uh, we smooth the way for those who come after us mm. and make sure that people know that they're accepted, uh, that there is a path that you can continue to play games for as long as you like um, and that it is a hobby that you can do forever basically mm. so yeah, yeah I, think I think the stigma important. is a western culture thing though because mm. in japan they just they just accepted it um yeah. much much earlier um mm -hmm. they're the parents of kids now they were gamers yeah. and they're just used to the culture whereas i don't know i just feel like it's still sort of developing in mm. the west well, i mean i drop into government mode at this moment i mean i advise governments on on policies around stimulus on the gaming industry um, average age of, of, uh, of a self-identified gamer in Australia is 36, disposable income and has a tertiary um, qualification at some point. Mm -hmm. It's the world's second biggest entertainment industry. Last year, I think $184 billion generated, and that was considered a conservative estimate. So mm -hmm. let's not kid ourselves. I mean, the only entertainment industry on earth that is bigger is streaming TV. We mm -hmm. are the mainstream. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it it, yeah. so people so don't realise yet, but we are, yeah. 100%. So don't let anybody tell you otherwise. <laughs> I think I read a little while back, it was interesting, the stigma around gaming, someone did this um, uh, theory around the fact that it actually traces back to the Atari and NES uh, consoles. Because when, um, when the gaming crash happened, mm. the stigma of video games are bad and stuff like that, and when Nintendo put out the NES or Nintendo Entertainment System, it was pitched as an entertainment device to make it more friendly, more mainstream, more acceptable to Which the masses. That's why it looks like the VCR. Exactly yeah. right. Um, so the stigma around video games versus entertainment could be, well, I don't know how factual it was, but they tracked back to even then as that early sort of, you know, almost a critical point in time where things changed, that, that divide happened between mm -hmm. entertainment and gaming. Yep, no, absolutely. 
let's move on uh, to the next sort of part of this is like how have as you've aged um, how has that actually affect your gaming so your physical like sort of ability for me um, I've actually gotten better <laughs> so um, as I've gotten older I've gotten more patient which means that even though perhaps um, my reaction speeds are not as good it means I'm persistent so I can actually continue to practice the skills it might take me a while to learn it but then eventually i get good um so um yeah <laughs> get good <laughs> <laughs> sometimes quite good i do know how to say that. um so uh yeah so tell me how like things have changed i've definitely noticed it like i play first person shooters and so i've definitely noticed my reaction times have slowed I say you're not blaming the mouse. Probably <laughs> doubles. <laughs> yeah, people always in my chat saying uh, Aim Labs is free. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> so is Twitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, so, but I, I never was a shroud or anything. But I definitely notice I can't um, win a uh, turn around and shoot uh, ten paces and shoot battles. So I need to play much more strategically. But pe that people find that interesting. When I started streaming, though, I thought, oh, I have to be a gamer, I have to look like a gamer, I have to be very good at the game, and I have to wear a baseball cap. They were the four thoughts I had. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, that's why. <laughs> Maybe that last one was right. Yeah, could be right, could be right. <laughs> but uh, I found that um, people actually liked that I was playing a slower style of gaming and more strategic style of gaming, even in first-person shooters, because it was an alternative to the amazing performers of, uh, you know, the top esports performers who are out there. So, mm -hmm. so I, I relaxed. Yeah, that's good. How about you, V? Um, I suffer from motion sickness. I always have. Um, as I, um, I'm hitting hitting the old forty five on Tuesday. Drop mm -hmm. that one in there. I'm the baby of the group. She, she's <laughs> the baby. <laughs> uh, um, so I've just uh, so I, mean, I used to I even worked. Um, I was a test case for a, working for a VR game for a while there, and I can't even oh, use VR. I that's cannot rough. even use VR anymore. Um, <laughs> so my motion sickness has become really acute in the last year, few years. Um, I used to play laser tag twice a week. Now I'd have to bring an oxygen cylinder around with me. <laughs> um, so I, I mean, I, and so I, I play a lot of turn-based tactical games. Who knew? Mm -hmm. um, and th but that being said, though, even then, I've noticed that my patience is a lot higher. I have a lot more philosophical with, about things. I used to play a lot of, I used to play five Warhammer tournaments of various mm -hmm. things. Um, and now I don't care if I win <laughs> or lose. I just kind of, as long as, as long as I've done as best as I can do, I'm a lot more philosophical about it. Okay. But I'm still going to try and get in the top 10. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just find reaction times definitely has slipped. Uh, Super Mario World, I used to be really good at that. Not so much anymore. The, the reflexes are just not there anymore. And uh, definitely noticing uh, if a game has small font, I <laughs> curse. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it just happens that one of my favourite games has really small front font, so i got to sit right up close to the screen. Uh, just on an off note, we were almost going to wear the same caps yeah. by yeah. accident. <laughs> <laughs> I had to switch out. I literally brought a spare hat just in case because <laughs> we both had the Atari hat. But <laughs> uh, uh, getting older, uh, I haven't quite reached that point where I'm noticing it too much, just the reflexes at this stage. Mm -hmm. For no. me, I think it's, oh, sorry. Yeah, you go. Um, for me, like I'm 48 years old, rapidly approaching, rapidly approaching 49. Uh, for me, my patience has increased as my vision has decreased. <laughs> um, so similar to spaces, like I, I'm, I'm a big fan of a good story, I love stuff like that. And when you look at the screen, like going to read, it's like, and that's it. <laughs> um, I love voice acting. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, expensive. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. um, but that, oh, yeah. Um, this also, you know, as you said, you know, your reflexes tend to dull a little bit. But I also f feel like, uh, as Toast said, you, you become more strategic in the games you play. You also, you know, you find that time to really enjoy what you're doing. So you don't want to waste your time on the ones that you're not going to really enjoy. So I've also found it become a lot more. I suppose picky in the games that I play as well. Like I still love my retro games. I will, you know, dig out, you know, just for you. I'll, I'll dig out like Sonic and stuff like that every now and again on the, on the Master System Mega Drive, stuff like that, and enjoy those games. It's a bit of a nostalgia hit. Um, but yeah, I just tend to be a bit more frugal with what I'll actually play, spend, spend my time playing mm -hmm. as well. And how's your health affected the way you play? No? 
Like is you've um, you've got a story about how. Say, is, this a, is this a story this time? Is your I'm story time. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> All right, story time, kids. And I say kids. I'm not, probably not the oldest person in the room. Actually, no, I'm not. Um, so many many years ago in my thirties which is actually even saying many, many years ago in my 30s kind of hurts a little bit. <laughs> um, I suffered from a stroke. So I had a, a probably, hope you can't tell now. Um, but yeah, I had a stroke, basically lost 10% movement in the left-hand side of my body. I was slurring my speech. Uh, I didn't know I'd had a stroke. I thought I was just exhausted from doing 12-hour days at a job I was doing at the time. Um, I literally drove to work the next day in a manual car down the freeway after having a stroke, got to work, got accused of being drunk at work, which was fun. Mm. Um, and then anyway, a couple of days later, I, uh, one of the people on my team, who was a former nurse, said, are you okay? And basically went for the whole thing of like working out I'd had a stroke. Mm. Went to hospital, they confirmed it. Um, back then, I got three free um, physio, uh, physical and speech therapy treatments. And after that, that was it. It was done. I had to pay for myself or just, you know, live with how I was. Uh, I wasn't happy with that. And so I did a bit of research and I started looking at ways of doing self-treatment and trying to, you know, recover my movement and my speech. And I'd seen a few people doing stuff using video games for recovery. So I had actually went online, done the research, and I had like you know, a bunch of different consoles and games. So I used things like, you know, the Wii and Guitar Hero and SingStar um, to basically redevelop my, you know, muscle skills, my fine motor skills, my speech skills. The power glove? That don't have one of those, but if you want to give one, I would love one of those. Uh, I'm missing one of those in my collection if anybody has one. Uh, but yeah, so I went through basically about three months of kind of torturous hell, like playing, playing the games that I love and games that I used to be able to be really, really good at. And I was struggling like, like, like this left side of my body was lagging constantly. And trying to you know, do these movements I'd done a thousand times before, especially things like Guitar Hero and just like going, I know I can do this, but just things weren't cooperating. It was just so incredibly frustrating. But mm. now I'm back to a point where I'm like maybe like 1% loss of movement if, 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 if even that realistically. Mm. Um, my speech is a lot better than what it was. Uh, but yeah, that was all thanks to video games. Part of the reason why I'm such a big advocate for video games is, as it's, uh, for physical health, mental health, for rehabilitation, stuff like that as well because I've been for that journey and I generally would not be here today if it wasn't for video games. So mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, and spaces. Yeah, absolutely. So, in 2020, fantastic year for all. Um, I actually, well, the year before, my dad had a heart attack, and I remember being in the hospital, thinking, "Wow, that would suck." <laughs> Six months later, it happened to me. Um, mine was a lot more milder than my dad's. Uh, thank God, I only had one. Uh, artery that was blocked uh, two stents later uh, I'm back to normal and my cholesterol levels actually improved since then which which is good um, and that kind of made me reflect back on uh, basically just life in general and it actually made me want to play more games <laughs> because mm. I wanted to make sure I, I realized that I'm not I'm in overtime now uh, having had the heart attack and I have to ch choose and pick the games that I play more wisely. Probably not a good idea to play Xenoblade Chronicles X, but that's a 200-hour <laughs> game. Um, but, yeah, it's just made me realise that uh, spend as much time as you can on the things that you like and, and love, and video games is one of those things. Also, streaming helped. Uh, prior to doing streaming, I never used to do anything like this. So I, I remember the first YouTube video I did, I just set up a camera a Disney sing it mic <laughs> <laughs> and I just started talking and it's, it's you can see the difference between my first video and the, and the latest one I've just become a lot more confident in being up in front of a camera um, but as far as the health side of things go um, yeah I've just managed to pull through that and uh, thank God that I'm able to um, concentrate on my health a bit more now mm -hmm. mm. absolutely um, yeah. for me it's mental health oh yeah um, I, particularly after the pandemic, and I think we all had that. And I had the thing of migrating straight after the pandemic, moving from Perth to Dunedin in the South Island, losing 20 degrees of temperature in the process. <laughs> yeah. um, I play in a social league in 40K. Um, I've got a demanding job. And so I'm playing games all during the week and, and um, like test cases, all that sort of stuff, having a look on, on, you know, helping devs out, all the rest of it. But then on weekends, it was a way to playing in a social league and it's 50% women and... It gets me out the front door. Mm -hmm. 
I actually go, because I, I can sit and paint miniatures for eight hours while watching Supernatural. Um, <laughs> nice. And to actually remember that I have to talk to people when I'm not working. Um, mm -hmm. And that has been a huge impact on my mental health because migrating is hard. Yes. Like when you're immigrating to a new place and you don't know anyone and actually getting out and having to, you know, even if some days it feels like an effort, even if some days it's Dunedin so it's raining buckets outside, it just gets me out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, for me it's a bit of a combination of physical and mental as well. Uh, I, I do have to be careful of RSI or carpal tunnel or whatever it's called nowadays. Uh, so I, I, I start to, if I keyboard and mouse too long, uh, then I'll start to get some symptoms in my wrist and hands. I have to be careful to take breaks and do all the right things. And if, mm -hmm. if you do st notice that, you get ahead of it and don't let it go too far because yeah. uh, I've had friends who have uh, got much worse injuries from that sort of thing. So I know to be careful about that. And just stamina, I just get tired. I can't do a stream for 10 hours or 12 hours like other people do uh, on, on the platform. There's kind of a bit of pressure to do that uh, financially and Twitch will want you to stream longer and longer hours. It's like, no, I don't, I, I, I can't do that physically. Five or six hours is plenty for me. I start at lunchtime and finish at dinner time, or, or push it a little bit, and, and um, that's enough for me. And and uh, it took me a while to be happy with just streaming to my level of capacity and my level of energy and mental capa capacity, and and being happy with that. And and that's my limit. And uh, be happy with that. Less is more. Yeah. No, that's fair. No, for me, um, recently I've been going through perimenopause. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, yeah, the last couple of years have been quite hard and I was getting all sorts of weird symptoms. I'd have brain fog and you could see me on stream just reaching for words and not finding them and just getting absolutely exhausted. And I would call that a smooth brain stream because it was like, there's not a lot happening today, I'm sorry. Um, and it wasn't till much more like oh, six months ago or something, it was like finally somebody suggested, it could just be menopause. Here, have some estrogen. And that has made a world of difference. I was about difference. to say, I've got some hills that can help with that. High five. High five. Estrogen. Um, so that, and that has really made a world of difference. But no, I get RSI type things. Um, so I need to be careful as well. And I would say anybody, it doesn't matter what age you are, please look after your hands. Oh um, because <laughs> they're so crucial for, I mean, lives, sure, whatever, gaming. Um, <laughs> So if you do notice you're starting to get problems, just back off, like really, you know, please do do look after them. So, but yeah, lack of estrogen exacerbated all of that as well. So it was a period where, no, no, I was having actual problems with hands and could not play for an extended period of time. So um, there was, yeah. sorry, there was one thing I just thought of that I have had. Uh, and when I even explained it to my doctor, he looked at me like I was some sort of nut job. <laughs> uh, eye migraines. Is anyone in the Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Train, migraines, yep. And you end up seeing this free light show and it mm -hmm. looks like RGB going everywhere. And I explained it to the doctor. He just looked at me like I was on, like I was on drugs or something. Um, you that's need a scary. new doctor, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> talk, to, talk to your optometrist about that one. They definitely yeah. will know, yeah. But that, no. that was really scary. But mm -hmm. you just sit there and you ride it out and 30 minutes later you're back to normal. Mm -hmm. So that was that was something I had to no, go in a darkened room. You should, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's lots of, yeah, lots arch. of different yeah. um, ocular migraines. Yeah, if you yeah. actually Google a, an image search, you'll see exactly what it mm -hmm. is that you see. Um, yeah, because it's hard to explain that to, to someone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I have a real question actually for spaces in this one. Mm. We're talking about physical stuff. When you're working in, in, on, on the on the Sega Hotline, and I just at the PlayStation. I'll try and remember what I used back. Yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah. I developed the claw, so your hand just becomes a resting thing of a controller. So you put your hands down. And it becomes this resting, like con like you're holding a controller. That's like the resting. Who, who I, else I has this? I looked down, I did that before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's, yeah, like yeah. my hands would naturally sit like this now. So I put down like that. I was like, yep, yeah, cool, great. And it's like, oh, great. I've got a PS2 controller on my hand. Not even yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if the same thing with the, with the Sega controllers. Uh, I actually have more issues with mobile phones. You're holding the mobile phone and your pinky goes asleep because it's, <laughs> oh, it's holding yes. it. And I, I think they should be making mobile phones ergonomically shaped to your hand. Um, but as far as controllers, uh, well, in Sega, our controls were rounded, the Mega Drive. <laughs> Not like the NES. <laughs> uh, so, no, I didn't have that issue okay. myself. 
<laughs> no, fair enough. Um, so we're all part of different sorts of gaming communities, um, whether they're professional or hobby. How do you fit? How does you and your age fit in within your gaming communities? So, V, I'll start with you this time. How, like, are you treated as like a sort of respected elder, like within your professional, and then also your kind of a you disrespected know. elder? Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, like, I've got 18 young teams over there on a booth, and, and to them, obviously, I'm an authority figure. Um, I actually control whether their grants get approved and signed off and all that sort of stuff. So there is a little bit of that that goes on. Um, you get a point as well where you get a street cred behind you and you stop, you kind of stop, in the career-wise, I've stopped caring. Um, <laughs> like, I've done, I've done long enough now. I mean, take it or leave it. Um, and, and everything's sort of okay there. Um, I always, again, I always work with indies. I have zero interest in working for AAA because the machine, the large machine of it all just doesn't interest me. Um, but, I mean, I, I am effectively a leader by default by due to my day job in that community. So, mm -hmm. it, I mean, they can disrespect me all they want. They just don't get on our booths <laughs> when it comes to being at PAX. Um, and how does that contrast with your, like, your gaming community, like your 40K community? So, in the 40, so um, living, I live in, in Otepote, Dunedin, in the South Island of New Zealand. So coming into that culture as well because Maori culture sort of percolates everything within New Zealand. So I'm referred to as a 40K komatoa. Komatoa being a respected elder. And I'm like, I'm not ready for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think I, I, I'm actually the oldest person in this in, in the league and I make up through it through, through good skincare. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just, uh, I mean, it, it, miniatures is a bit different because uh, so there's certain miniatures like tabletop clubs and all that and you are, <laughs> even in your mid-40s, you're the, the youngest person in the room when you walk rock in there. Um, so it's, a, it's kind of a mixed bag, but I mean, playing in a social league and, and, and all that, I find as well, maybe in, when you play competitively and that stuff, I'm not, I don't play a lot of competitive, but mm -hmm. um, when you talk up, there's probably a little bit of, uh, stigma there is if, if anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, and, and you just see how that one goes, um, because I'm going to take a little bit like, a, again, I, I'm a risk analysis strategy person. I'm going to sit and go through my mental loops to, to play through everything. It's who I am as a human being, and some of the guys that the, the younger ones want to push and, and they like playing on the clock. Mm. Yeah, so. no, fair enough. And Noel, so from your point of view as sort of industry, how uh, like how does your age affect the way people in industry deal with you? It's definitely been a bit of a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. Like I do get the you know oh wise old sage and the. <laughs> old man who knows nothing sort of thing. Um, so it's a bit of a mixed thing. Like, unfortunately, you know, as you get older, you will experience some form of ageism. Mm -hmm. um, but what I, what I really enjoy doing is people who come up and actually want to you know, leverage my experience. And I'm always happy to share my experiences, my knowledge, stuff like that with you know, people who are coming up in the games industry or even just external that who want some help and want to learn from what I've been through. I'm always happy to share that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, yeah, occasionally the people who come up like, oh, you're so old. You wouldn't know what's going on. What do you know about video games? Boy. But, yeah, it's one, it's one of those things where um, I think as you get older, because the whole game industry, as V was saying before, is, you know, slowly ageing up and up and up, um, that, you know, people within the industry and people who are stalwarts are, you know, around a similar age or, you know, ageing up as well. So I think there's a mutual level of respect it's, it's not certain. the game industry is also not one thing. I mean, oh, no, talk, talk, talking to someone who works in free to play mobile and talking to someone who works in VR or consoles or indie or AAA, it's, it's all different. A very 100%. mixed bag and a very so. It, it, it's the, the game. A, a joke that the video game industry is actually seventeen industries in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, but the, and different sectors take treat everyone differently. And yeah. the other thing too is, I mean, particularly with some of the larger companies, the execs are aging. Oh, but yeah, the important definitely. thing is to realize that the environment do changes almost constantly. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But I will say as well, there is a need for young blood in the games industry and a need mm -hmm. for new perspective constantly as well. Like. If the same people who were running the games industry 20 years ago were still running it now, we would have the exact same games. There'd be no innovation. There'd be a lot less accessibility. About that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like things like that. Like it, there is a need for young blood. Like it, it has to happen. Otherwise, it's going to be so stale. It's just going to become like dead. Mm -hmm. So there's a definitely a need for new, innovative, you know, people to come in and have these new ideas, have those new thoughts as well. There's also a space for older gamers to, you know, help, help them on their path. 
mm-hmm. and not be you know, a gatekeeper or a roadblock as well. Because I think it's an important thing as well to make sure we do enable the next generation of gamers or games industry people, or people who just enjoy games, to really actually you know be passionate and empower them to you know follow their desires and follow their dreams and follow their passions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Spaces, what about your sort of gaming communities? So, And you've worked, obviously worked in games as well. So. Well, I've worked in games. Well, I was going to say I'm probably the only one here that's not still in the industry, um, but I have had it affect me. I went for a, a, a role within – I work in insurance and I went for a different role and it was a video uh, interview and behind mm. me I've got Sonic the Hedgehog, Shadow, <laughs> all the rest of it, and I had a pixel screen showing Golden Axe clips and whatever – and I, I forget it's there and I do the interview and at the end of it she goes, what is all that behind you? <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's just my gaming stuff. Don't you find that distracting? And I'm like, no, my screen's here. It's here. <laughs> that's back there. I'm not looking at that. Um, but, yeah, I, I ended up not getting the role simply because of that. Oh. And I just mm. thought, are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Possibly, yeah. 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 So it, it has affected me, uh, the whole stigma of video games. Uh, she was obviously what I call a normie. Like, she just <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> and Toast Rack? I found uh, Twitch viewers amazingly accepting of my age. I was very nervous about it starting out, but they've been quite amazing. I still get about once a week I'll get some ageism, especially if I'm featured on the front page. If I'm lucky mm-hmm. enough to be featured on the Twitch homepage, I'll get a lot of new people coming through. And I'll get one or two, um, you know, go get good grandpa or <laughs> go home old man and stuff like that. But luck- uh, luckily I have enough chat support to that. They'll just pile on that person yeah. and, and they, they won't stay around very long. And uh, uh, But that's that's very much the exception to the rule. It's been amazing how accepting people have been of, uh, of me uh, at, at, at my age and, and uh, I've, been, I've been very lucky with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's harder with my real world friends, especially from other industries like old IT friends, old TV friends, to I- explain to them what my job is. Uh, they, they all think it's hilarious uh, that I play games for a living and, and you get paid for that. And I think it's awesome. And most of them come around and think it's awesome, but, uh, but mm-hmm. some of them just think I'm this strange person and it's, it's, it's hard to explain to them that it's a real job. Yeah. yeah, but here's the thing, right? So the, with the maturing of the audiences, the, the range of product that's available, and we talk about innovation, Pentiment. Oh, that's a great oh, Conscript. Yes. Love it. Conscript came out. They just won the Agda's game of the. Well, that came from Melbourne. It's like you got games from moments of of things that are interested in more mature audiences are mm-hmm. interested in different content. Mm-hmm. So you have this wonderful increased diversity in the kinds of games that you can come and play. Yeah. No, I think that's fantastic. That's true. Yeah. So for me, um, so my community. Actually, when I stream on Twitch at ICYIC, thanks for following. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, just visibly I look older um, and so I definitely attract people who are sort of my age and older. There's definitely some young'uns there. Um, but, no, I regularly run dungeons um, with people who are like my regular crew is in their 60s. Um, one person's in their sort of 30s and the others are in their 60s. So, um, and we're running harder and harder content. Um, I um, I think you reach a certain age um, and you stop really caring too much mm. what people mm. think, yep. uh, which is something to look forward to. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so, you can speak your mind, uh, you can tell people, no, that's not acceptable here, and you can boot them. Uh, so yeah, I really well the ones that give me crap older. about it, they're only a few footy seasons away from it themselves. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. well that's yeah. that's the thing, and like you know everybody ultimately wants to get older. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. the alternative is is no, we don't want to go there. I have um, to get used to being called dad. That that's one thing, one transition I had to make. I don't have kids myself. Uh, people online give was it dad or daddy? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll take either over grandpa. I say yeah. steady, <laughs> I'm not that old. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and and also people because I was older, people started asking life advice, like real mm. world life advice as well, and sort of seeing me as especially if people have stu- stuck around for a while. Stu- so it's sort of a position of responsibility, and 
I, I always say I'm, I'm not a therapist. I'm not. Uh, yeah, that gets rough I, when you're live on air and even, someone comes in with some really dark yeah. topic and you're like, but I'm I have, just I have had, had a lot of life experience. <laughs> so I can tell you, uh, I've probably been in a similar situation and I can tell you what I did right whether and whether it went well or badly and what i learned from it and that's that's what i can do and that's what i can offer mm -hmm. absolutely um i've gotten out of order so <laughs> <laughs> we'll blame the perimenopause shall we um so are there any other final thoughts people wanted to share about their gaming adventures um you know their age anything else that um springs to mind that wise advice for younger players try diverse content mm -hmm. get out yeah. and see have a look at the size and the scope of what's out there and and just go and experiment and you know i'm, I'm always going to be an evangelist for indie creators and you know there are teams down there on that show floor right now not just our teams but other teams and they we if you're buying their indie game you're paying for their lunch mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah um mm -hmm. and or you're all you're putting their kids through school like mm -hmm. just try different stuff. And the other thing too is that, like I said, the, mature, the industry has matured. The types of content out there, there's so many different kinds types of things of what can be a game. It isn't just all large creators. I mean, there is a place for that. But, but the other thing too is you never know when something's going to blow up. Uh, we, had a, we had a mad scientist escape room game where you had to pick your stupid tie. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, and all that sort of stuff can blow up as well. There's just that diversity in content. And there is so much out there if you want to do something more than an FPS. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, just check out those, that indie section. Uh, one game mm -hmm. I saw there was just like hilarious. My, my arms are now longer. Has anyone yes, seen yes, that? Yes, <laughs> That's yes. just like, what? <laughs> yes, yes. You'll, you'll be surprised when you walk down there. Mm -hmm. I yeah. have one beef with uh, demos of indie games, and that is please take out the ageism, support inverted Y. Oh, hell oh, yes. yes. <laughs> we, talk, we talk all the time about accessibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Before yeah. I do my point, can we get a quick show of hands? Who plays inverted? Bless you all. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> who, who misses actual demos oh, and yeah, demo yeah. discs? Demo discs, yeah. And I have noticed that there, are, yeah. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. I've noticed that there are more actual demos, uh, which is yeah, fantastic. So I really game. appreciate. Yeah. It. Like, I don't need much of the game. That's fine. Half an hour, but I would love yeah. that half an hour to see if that's going to mm. be for me. Steam's really driving that again. Yeah, yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. So, uh, well. Uh, so I think that's covered uh, most of the talking bits. Could we have the lights up, if possible? Sorry, I see. Just wait one quick point. Oh, sorry, go. I, yep. Sorry. Um, from me, like everything, everything, like, like try diverse games, try everything like that. Do that. The other thing to say: keep your boxes for your yes. games, <laughs> for your consoles. Really? Keep this other stuff. It's harder and harder to find these days. If you go down through the classic gaming area, which I do definitely recommend, it's a great look back at the history of gaming, so we can see where you know gaming has evolved from. A little nice nostalgia piece as well, but. Some of those boxes and some of those bits of, you know, even the um, press material, stuff like that. Especially Pe Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. But, like, people don't consider stuff like the um, advertisement stuff or the press release stuff as part of their history. And there are places around the world which are trying to get that mm. information because it is so quickly discarded and forgotten about. But it is that sort of part of history as well. So I was going to say, keep your boxes. That's all I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try and keep them safe. No, I've still got my original... Original boxes, original discs. Outstanding. And they'll be here forever. <laughs> there's, a museum, there's a museum in Perth called the Nostalgia Box where it is yeah. a gaming museum. Oh, so okay. if you're ever in Perth, go, that's one of the few interesting things there. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. 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 <laughs> After 42 years of my life. <laughs> now, we do have just the teeniest, tiniest little giveaway. So I think what we're going to do is, uh, and if you were here last year and won this, please. Just you know, like let let somebody else uh, grab this one. Um, I if you uh, put up your hand if you are forty or older. Oh, oh wow. damn! Lovely. We have a demographic. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, um, uh, drop your um, drop your hand. Oh, oh, leave it up if you're fifty or older. Lovely, yeah. lovely. Okay, leave it up if you're sixty or older. Oh, oh we awesome. have two. No, okay. no, no. Three? Three. Three. I see. Oh, side. no, there's one at the back, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, there's lots. Oh, my God. Okay, yes. 
<laughs> I've been I've been extraordinarily short sighted for a long time and do need to go and see the ophthalmologist next week. Just to put the old creds out there. Okay, uh, leave your hands up if you're 70 or older. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well done. That's two. Can you? What? No, oh, yeah, there's a second one. Okay. There's a second no, one. That's fine. Two. There's one over there. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Oh, one over there as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 75 or older? Uh, okay. Ooh, all right. <laughs> no? Go by I, ones. Are we down to. I can't. You have to tell me if there's. I can't see no, the second no. hand. No, that's it. Okay. So down. 72. Are we 72 or older? Still 72? Well, we have a winner. Okay. We have a winner. Please stand winner, up. <laughs> Please, uh, do you mind standing up and just um, telling us? No, you're fine. <laughs> and we'll get a microphone brought down to you. One second, it's coming yeah. up behind you. There you go. Do Do you mind telling us what your first computer game was? Even you know, and it can have been like three weeks ago. What was your first game? Yep. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great question. So my plans are as soon as I retire, uh, I'm going full-time streaming um, or maybe, you know, a few extra days a week. Uh, I plan to run uh, um, PvP raids in uh, Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, so... <laughs> That's my that's my plan, uh, and uh, basically be loudly old on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I'm not sure what I'll do next. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, people burn out from streaming, so I don't think I'll. I don't know if I'll still be streaming at seventy, uh, but uh, I'll be doing something. Oh, I'll definitely be gaming. Uh, something gaming related. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Assuming that I do get to retire, mm. um, <laughs> I'm going to do a history degree. I've got a mad passion about that, and it, 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 to me, my gaming hobby and my and, and history is the same thing. And it's the stories, and it's the tales, and it's the thing. So I'm going to do, I'm going to start and do a bachelor, and I'm going to keep going until I can't do it no more. Mm, fantastic. Okay. Uh, when I hit sixty, I plan to move away from social media and just spend more time for myself. Yeah. Uh, and that includes making the ultimate arcade machine just for me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Um, for me, I would like to be sharing stories and helping to educate people about the history of video games. Mm -hmm. um, like, I've got my own little personal museum. Uh, I'm like a bit of an amateur gaming historian, so I like to collect and preserve that sort of stuff. I was doing similar work at the National Film and Sound Archive. I mean, ideally, if I... Yeah, if I retire and let's say I happen to win Powerball as well, I'd love to start my own actual video game museum and open it to the public from an educational point of view as well. That's mm -hmm. what I would love to be doing. Fantastic. <laughs> so we have, a, we have a small prize for you, so I will bring it out to you later if you'd like. That's fine if you are happy to just sit for a minute. Um, does anybody else have any questions for us? Or, uh, yeah? As in the Adam Sandler movie? Yeah. Yeah, oh, cool. yeah just making sure. <laughs> you go first. I was just going to say, I love that they had a shot at Billy Mitchell. That was mm. great. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, but I, I, I don't mind the cliché-ness. I, I, I guess you've got to do some cliché references to gaming mm. culture because it is for the wider audience. Um, but there was a few little nice nods in that ga in that movie that I think more hardcore gamers would have gotten. So I do appreciate that. I have to admit, I did like the little knowledge bits in there as well. So talking about you know not them not knowing how to defeat the, the centipede in centipede sort of thing. They were just finally randomly out and like aim for the head <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, those nice little nods to gaming culture, I think they were quite they, they, they were nice and very very cute. But the, some of the tropes in there were a bit, um, I don't know, maybe set gaming back a little bit in that sort of sense. Like, was that well, that's of, what I meant by yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. mainstream. Yeah. Um, Ready Player One, I thought. Oh, yes, that was that's great. Right. I yeah. love that yeah. movie. 
Yeah. I don't. Who, the only time I get time to watch films is on planes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Five yeah. major gaming events yeah. every year. Um, I haven't seen them either. Sorry. No, no I haven't seen them. <laughs> so like the. Um, so just riffing off the, but off the stereotype thing. It's my job to like to advise governments often around policy. I've done. I've advised five state governments in Australia and one in New Zealand. Um, and the thing that I do always do is when we're doing a press release, don't use the words level up. <laughs> don't 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 dip into the game, particularly when Aren't we're you leveling up soon. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You're leveling the humor down. Yeah. Um, but I mean, just don't, to, particularly when talking about the business of video games, don't dip into that gaming cliche talk. It actually mm. doesn't serve the industry very well. Mm. Um, yeah. Because because it kind of makes it like, oh it's again it's hard like gaming's for kids yeah well it's making a lot more money than you like we're we're bigger than wool exports now so come on wow okay. I think it's Fantastic. gotten better yeah. um, like, Rumble okay. in the Bronx had a scene where uh, the kid is playing a Game Gear and there's no game in the damn thing and it's just playing <laughs> yeah. some random sound effects so that sort of thing doesn't happen anymore <laughs> yeah no that's true uh, is there another question we've got time for one more um, just uh, if you right here yep. and, and um, things like that. Um, how do you think you've transitioned uh, with the use of that? Has it been easy or has it been hard? Mm. Oh. Um, I've got an easy answer in that I never had a console ever. I've only ever had keyboard and mouse uh, and so <laughs> okay. it's always okay. been the okay. same. <laughs> so. The PC master race has spoken. <laughs> no, no, no just, uh, yeah, just my family never had one and so just... Yeah, never. No, none of my friends had one, so I never, never. My used first one. gaming critique was Space Invaders because the original oh. cabinet didn't have a joystick; it was buttons, oh. and I actually found it difficult to use mm. as a kid. Mm. And then they re-released it with a joystick. So mm -hmm. yeah. even keyboard and mouse. Um, remember the time before WASD for movement? Oh, uh, yes. If you go back and try and play Doom with the original oh, control have. layout, it is a nightmare. Yeah. It is yeah. absolutely impossible. And so thank goodness it, uh, key layouts have improved. Mm. Yeah. I want to answer that with a question as well. Has anybody ever ever played the game Summer Games with a joystick? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you shred your palms when your joystick snapped in your hand? <laughs> yes. I appreciate the fact that games are now a lot more accessible in the sense where you don't have to like a joystick. Like that well, to in the arcades with hypersports, you used to you know, see kids with big lighters. I don't know why they're yeah. smoking, and they used to just rattle it over the controller. Yeah, to try and get back and yeah, forth yeah. faster for those things. Yeah. But I, I found like yeah. you know, it's one of those things where like. The controls are evolving in a sense to make make it more accessible. Like remember the Duke controller for the Xbox. So, so the Microsoft have an adaptability controller yeah, now, where awesome. and Fantastic. it's open source, so you can yeah. use yeah. that with a Switch or whatever you want. Mm -hmm. um, PlayStation have, have done a similar sort of thing as well. Yeah, so they're there catching are, on. Yeah. So the um, and the other thing too, um, even VR is working on their yeah. accessibility around all that sort of stuff. I mean, personally, I play on a Switch all the time because I'm on a plane so often. If I can't take my game with me, and I'm excited that the Steam Deck is finally oh in this region. <laughs> Yes. And it has warranty support. Um, also, and as well, yeah. Xbox of Vesta also now started uh, providing 3D printable files to make the joysticks on controllers oh. easier for people to use as a free. Oh, yeah. yeah, and for goodness sake, they should. I mean, like, so Xbox has got the right idea. They've open sourced it. Yeah. Open anything when we're doing stuff to do adaptability, to mm. doing accessibility, we should be open sourcing. 100%. It is just yep. better if everyone collaborates. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Was that we all 100%. we all win when we all play together. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Uh, we've got time for one more question. What have we got? Just hand up. Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Love the outfit. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> and I'm going to try it without the microphone because I'm told that I have a very good uh, projecting voice. It's it's coming through well. I'm 65 years of age. Woo. I started gaming when I was 55 years of age. Perfect. Awesome. Perfect time to start. Yep. Now, the way that you've been talking today and the feeling that I've got from the audience today is that most people here started young and they've grown with it. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is what is your way of getting people like myself, yeah. older people, actually involved, not leaving us out in the cold yeah. mm. because 
we don't know how to use a controller or we're a touch typist and can't figure out that old keyboard <laughs> for Crosby. Mm. So what is the plan within the industry? What is the plan with everybody here to actually bring older people in? Don't just mentor the young ones. Yeah. Mentor us old fogies as well. Yeah, absolutely. No. Fantastic question. Yeah, Fantastic question. great question. Um, so, um, and I guess this probably goes out to people in the audience as well to have a think about how you bring other people in. So we've all talked a bit here about sort of relatives who maybe don't understand gaming, who are not interested. But I would bet almost all of them play some sort of game on mobile phone. Mm -hmm. And whether that's Wordle or, you know, something else. So I would honestly say, um, and almost everybody has a smartphone these days, um, you know, even my dad. Um, so that is, I think, a gateway that you can use to take people in. Uh, if you've got something like a Netflix, if you've got a Netflix subscription, um, all of the Netflix supported games, like yeah, they've they re-released a bunch, are fantastic. Mm. Um, if you think they'd be interested in puzzle games, I would 100% recommend Monument Valley. I don't know who's mm. absolutely amazing game and gets you in with the store and it's just it's, I don't want to say it's simple as such, but the idea of it is straightforward but it's absolutely captivating. Sorry, can I, can I actually mm. jump in from an industry Please, perspective? Go because for it. I, because I've, I've heard, uh, the people, look the, the amount of, con uh, talk about diversity and content, right? People are making games for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you go down to that indie show floor right now, you will find something and it will be like they made it for you. Mm. It will hit all your right beats. I promise you, you will see it and, and, and you know, go sliding around the darker edges of Steam, of Steam or, or mm -hmm. the Nintendo eStore or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like I talk about different types of content. There's all sorts of different ideas of what can be a game, what you can be doing. People are listening. And the other thing too is we actually recognize older audiences. Mm -hmm. So come on in. And, and the other thing too is you can go down on the converse thing, my hobby side of things, you can go down right now and pick up a paintbrush and start painting, um, painting miniatures and chatting with the people around you. Mm -hmm. You are welcome. Oh yeah. Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah. I see, can I talk about that as well? And just one other quick thing on that as well, mm -hmm. like there are literally millions of games out there. If you have an alignment to a certain story type or a hero type or you know a villain type or something like that if you have a passion about something that's involved in a video in like in anything in life could be stories movies, stuff like that, you will find a video game to match that same passion in some way shape or form and that's a level of accessibility that you're comfortable with mm -hmm. i recently got my mother into game doing point and click games like monkey island my mom yeah. is 77. Mm -hmm. yep ron gilbert uh, is somewhere around here is, yeah yep. yeah oh, he's, he's really? like, he actually lives in new zealand now Oh, oh, really? not know that. Yeah. There you go. But like, yeah, but I found that sort of stuff like she was curious about video games and what I've been doing in the industry sort of thing. So I explained it to her and she didn't quite get it. I said, well, what do you sort of like? So I love the old pirate movies and stuff like that. So Monkey Island. Yeah. Let's, do, <laughs> let's run you through that and sort of explain it to her. And she was into it. She loves it now. She's off and running. Mm -hmm. But yeah. You'll find yeah. something out there to suit your fashion. Never be afraid of games. There's something out there for you. Yeah, absolutely. But I would say, yeah, get get your get your relatives, like start them on a more advanced mobile phone game. Mm. Like start them there. Um, and then see how they go. If they go, you know, I really like the story in that thing, but it's, you know, I just, I don't like playing on a phone. It's like, oh, great. <laughs> Let me show you where you can go from here. Mm. But yeah, mobile phone is like, if you play on a mobile phone, you can and are a gamer. Like that That's is not a new not thing, a thing, by the way, pe uh, mm. older gamers getting started into gaming. Because uh, back in the 80s, a lot of people that I used to um, sort of, not collab with, but hang out with. They were in their 60s and 70s and they had only, had only just started getting into gaming back mm -hmm. in that era. Yep. So it's not a new thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm. Well, I would like to say thank you very much for everybody who has come here today. Um, just do take a look around and just celebrate yourselves <laughs> because um, PAX is a wonderful place and it's a wonderful place for all of us, no matter what age you are or when you started gaming. Um, I think it's fantastic. So thank you very much for coming today and thank you to <laughs> the wonderful panellists. Thanks, guys. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much.